between fractions, decimals and percentages is absolutely crucial in so many aspects of everyday life. And if we take a fraction like four-fifths and we need to change it into a decimal, effectively what we're doing is we're taking our four, our numerator, and we're dividing it by five. Now if we take four and divide it by five on a calculator, that's going to give us 0 0.8. So 0 0.8 is the decimal equivalent to four-fifths. On the non-calculator uh, paper, we could actually say that 4 divided by 5 produces, well what I'm actually going to do here, I'm going to put a 5 outside the bus stop, and I'm actually going to put 4.0 there. I say 5 into 4 doesn't go, so I put a 0. But then when I carry the 4 over to here, 5 into 40 does go, 5 into 40 goes 8. So we can quite clearly see that 4 fifths is equal to 0 0.8. And to have that basic skill of changing from a fraction to a decimal is really, really important in everyday life. Changing from a decimal to a percentage is incredibly straightforward. We just simply take our, our decimal, 0 0.8, we times it by 100, and then we have 80%. So my final answer here is that 4 fifths is equivalent to 0 0.8, which is equivalent to 80%. If we wanted to go the other way, from 80% up to 0 0.8, we're effectively um, dividing by 100. So in this direction, we're times by 100, and going back, we're actually divided by 100. And then if we're going from a decimal back to a fraction, we would use the base system and we'd say, okay, 0 0.8 is 8 tenths, and 8 tenths simplifies to 4 fifths. So we can see that 8 tenths, because there's a tenth column there, produces 4 fifths. So 8 tenths is equivalent to 4 fifths, and that's our final answer for the 4 fifths as a fraction, decimal, and, and percentage. For my next example, if I've got an eighth here, and I want to change it into a decimal, I could use a calculator, but if it was on a non-calculator uh, paper, what I've effectively got here is 1 divided by 8. Now, if I set up a little bus stop here, 8 into 1.000, I can see that if I put the decimal point up there, I can see that 8 into 1 doesn't go, so I put a 0. 8 into 10 goes once, remained 2. 8 into 20 goes twice, remained 4. And 8 into 40 goes 5. So I can see that 1 8 is equivalent to 0 0.125. Really straightforward, by just dividing the numerator by the denominator, I can see that 1 8 is 0 0.125. And if I want to change that into um, a percentage, I'll just multiply 0 0.125 by 100. And we must remember that when we're multiplying by 10, this decimal point bounces one place to the right, and if we're multiplying by 100, this decimal point bounces two places to the right, so that produces 12.5%. So I can see that 1 8th is the same as 0 0.125, which is the same as 12.5%. And I think that skill of making the transition from a fraction to a decimal to a percentage is incredibly important, and it kind of reminds me of somebody that can speak three languages. So you kind of say, OK, if we've got English, French and Spanish, and that connection between the languages is a crucial aspect to understanding the, the, the connection between fraction, decimals and percentages. It's a really, really important skill in everyday life. And my last percentage question um, is, a, uh, is a question that a lot of students find uh, quite difficult to conceptualise because it's a reverse percentage question and um, the solution um, for a question like this I think it's easily explained when we use an empty box strategy. So if we look at this question here, it says that a car is sold for £7,200, which is 80% of the original purchase price, find the original purchase price. Now conceptually that's quite a demanding question, because we've almost got to go back in time to find the number that we don't know at the moment, but we do know what the value of the car is now. So what I'm actually going to do here is I'm going to draw an empty box. I'm not going to put anything in it, but I'm going to draw a curvy arrow to another box here. And in this other box, I've got the price of the car now. So that's now been sold.
for £7,200. Now, I don't know what's in this box at the moment, but what I do know is whatever there was in there, or is in there, because it's been sold for 80% of the original price, I can use a little multiplier here and say, whatever the number is, if I times it by 0 0.8, then I get £7,200. Now, a diagram like this makes the whole reverse percentage question crystal clear, because I now know that by working backwards, instead of times in by 0 0.8, I'm actually going to divide by 0 0.8 to get to my, my correct solution from the value of the car that used to be the case. So on my scientific calculator, I just type in my £7,200, I divide it by 0 0.8, and that gives me £9,000. So I can see that the original purchase price of the car is £9,000. So the original price was £9,000, it sold for 80% of the original value, it's now worth 7200 but by doing this empty box strategy, times it by the multiplier, 0 0.8, and then doing the opposite, the opposite times he's dividing, dividing by 0 0.8 gives me the correct answer. So if a question like this comes up in the exam, a nice, clear, concise diagram with a multiplier effect and then working backwards is perhaps the best strategy to get the correct answer. If a question like this comes up, in the exam, you're sure to get maximum marks if you adopt the strategy. So best of luck from the Collins team.